now. So pray that everything stays on and working. Uh, if you are able in body or in spirit, will you stand and join us in worship today? darkness, sing through the fire, praise when it don't make sense, sometimes you've got to stare down the giants, worship from the lion's den, sometimes you've got to shout it from the mountain, louder in the valley, trusting that he's gonna get you there. Sometimes you gotta welcome the wonder, wait for the answer, worship with your hands in the air. I praise you anywhere. Praise, give praise, give praise in the highest. Praise, give praise, give praise in the highest. Sometimes you gotta praise in the prison, cry out to heaven, shout it till the door swings wide. Sometimes you gotta stand on your shackles, brave in the battle, worship with your hands held high. I'll praise you anywhere. Praise and praise and praise in the highest. Praise and praise you praise in the highest.
love one another and to remind one another and one another even when we can't sing those words that the people around us and God sings that over us that we are not alone that we have the promises of God so I'm so glad that you are here in worship with us today I am so glad to be back in this space with you today yay <laughs> It's been a long two weeks. I never knew I'd be so grateful for power, and it could be an entire sermon series about the darkness and seeing a great light. Um, so we're so glad that you are here with us worshiping today. When you came in, you were handed a bulletin. On the back of that bulletin is information about all the things coming up, including a QR code down at the bottom. I'd love to know you're here today, and I'd love to know how we can connect with you in this new season of Lent that we're going to talk about here in a little bit. So be sure and let me know that you're here today. There are packets on the end of every row and the back seat and so if you would take that packet and pass it along there's a connect card in there a giving card in there and a prayer card in there and we would love to be able to do all three with you connect with you help you learn how to give help to be part of that giving as a community together and to help pray with you if you have something going on in your life that you need prayer for this week we are a community that believes not only in the power of prayer, but of the power of praying together. And so please be sure and look through those cards. And then the offering baskets are going to come by later in the service. And you can drop those in the offering basket a little bit later. Well, like I said, we are entering a new season and there is so much coming up during this season of Lent. One of those things is uh, started just this past week on Ash Wednesday. We have Lenten devotionals that come out every single week and so, or every single day during this time period leading up to Easter. And so I would love for you to subscribe to that. You can go to cumc.com slash Lent. If you're looking for a devotional, just something to start your day during this season, it's a great opportunity just to pull it up. It'll come in your email every single day. So be sure and subscribe to that. You can do that through that link. And then we also have sauce, spaghetti sauce that you can um, purchase that is going to go to missions um, and to uh, a wonderful cause that is helping to uh, give not only just sight, but glasses, thousands of glasses um, around the country and around the world. And the pasta sauce is really good. So be sure and order some of that as well. And then finally, we have Lenten studies that are starting this week. If you have the opportunity in your schedule to be part of that, to dive deeper in your faith, we are connecting our Lent study and our Lent sermon series with prayer which is what we're going to be talking about. And so it's a great opportunity on Tuesday nights um, with me and with Shannon or Sharon Hudak um, to talk about contemplative prayer. Um, I will be leading one at noon on Tuesdays. And if you can't make it in person, you can also join us online on Monday nights. And so look at those options and see if there is a way for you to connect with us during the season of Lent to grow deeper in your faith as well. We're going to continue worship this morning by singing one of my favorite songs that talks about the love of God. And I love this song because it, it's sort of um, uh, different. The word reckless is not normally something that we think of when we think of God. It's not the first descriptor, I would say, that comes to mind of God. It's normally something we use uh, when we talk about teenagers, right, or bad decisions. That was just reckless. But God's love is so overwhelming in our lives that when we really begin to worship God and dig deep into just how abundant God's love is for us, it's actually a little bit reckless. And so as we continue worship this morning, let's do so with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Good and gracious God, we come back into this space today with abundant and grateful hearts. Thankful for this community, thankful for this space, thankful for the music and for the people who are leading us today. And so God, during this time, we lay aside all the things we walked in with. We lay aside our worries and our doubts. We lay aside whatever this past week held and we give it all to you. And we simply sing about your worthiness, your goodness, your reckless love in our lives. Help us to see it, help us to embrace it, help us to witness to it in this world and in our communities. 
It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. spoke a word, you were singing over me. Oh, you have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. Oh, you have been so, so kind to me. No, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the mind and I, and I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, Ending, reckless love of God. Yeah. When I was your foe, still your love fought for me. Oh, you've been so, so good to me every day. Oh, and I felt no worth. You paid it all for me. Oh, because you have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming never Reckless love of God Oh, it chases me down Fights till I'm found Leaves in mind denying And I couldn't hurt it I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away No, the overwhelming Never ending Reckless love of God
want to go ahead and invite all the children down to the rug for children's time with Miss Julie. Yeah, you're going to come sit with me? You're going to come do children's time with me? Hi, guys. How are y'all? It's so cold outside. I'm ready for the warm weather. Yeah, I'm ready for the warm weather. Okay, so today we are talking about choices. Have you ever had to make a choice? All right, so we're going to make a couple choices today, okay? And I want you to raise one hand if you're going to do one choice and the other hand if you're going to do another choice. You'll see what I mean, okay? Do you like chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate or vanilla? Both? Yeah? Oh, that's good. That's good. It also depends. I mean, are we talking ice cream? Are we talking chocolate, like chocolate bars? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Would you choose, and you have to choose one, ice cream or cookies? Ice cream? I love ice cream. I love ice cream too. I'm on a big ice cream kick right now. Yeah. Okay. Here's another one. Would you choose movies? Or TV shows? TV shows. TV shows, shows movies. Kitties, yeah, super. Got the yeah. It's okay, the James, kitties. would you choose cheeseburgers or chicken nuggets? Yeah, chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets. <laughs> yeah, which would y'all choose? Cheeseburger or chicken nuggets? Cheeseburger. Cheeseburger. I'm a cheeseburger girl too. Yeah. Okay, here's one for everybody else coffee or tea? Coffee, praise, you're in the right place. All right. Well, today we are talking all about choices and not maybe the really, really big choices, but some of the small choices that we make every single day. And do you know, you can make small choices that make a big difference, like saying hi to somebody that's maybe sitting by themselves or talking to somebody that is, is new at school or maybe coming to church. You made that choice today. Way to go, every one of y'all. Or praying at meals or when we go to bed at night, all these little small choices that we make can either help us or they can maybe not be so good for us. So I want you to be thinking about the choices that you make. And James is going to be thinking about the choices he makes too, both now and later. So um, as we make these choices, we know that God helps us in all of those things, okay? All right, let's say a prayer together. And let's say a prayer that James starts making better choices, okay? All right, let's pray. God, we thank you for our children and for the way in which they can continue to lead us in your love. Help us all to continue to grow in your love and light together. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks, guys. So today we're starting a new sermon series, and we're actually starting a new season in the life of our church that was, uh, uh, began this past week on Wednesday, Ash Wednesday. I'm one of those weird people that I love the um, liturgical calendaring of the church, and so I love the season of Advent that leads up to Christmas. I love Lent that leads up to Easter, and I love Ash Wednesday. <laughs> which sounds really weird. It's almost like saying, I love funerals, man, they're just great. But because it's one of those tangible things that we do in the church, we put the mark of the sign of the cross on our forehead or on our hand um, and with ashes. And we remember the words that Jesus said when Jesus said, repent and believe in the gospel. And so it marks this time, physically marks this time for us called Lent. Now, you may not know that Lent is the oldest tradition that we have in our church. It dates all the way back to the Council of Nicaea. And just to give you a little frame of reference, that was before the first Christmas was celebrated. That was before the first Easter was celebrated. And so Lent has been a season and a tradition in the church 
for a long, long time, um, almost as far back as the early church um, was accepted into uh, the religious circles of the time. And so as I began to think about traditions, I was reminded of the tradition that we all probably celebrated last Sunday in some form or fashion, the tradition of Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, I hope you ate some good food. I hope that you got to watch a really good game because it was a really good game. And of course, the halftime performance. So I, I and my friends, you know, we are... Uh, Get, getting closer to middle aged, and um, so Usher was just like right up our alley. We're like, yeah, yeah, kids, you watch. Th this was our guy, um, and so we began to talk about me and my friends. What were some of our favorite halftime performances? And so we talked about uh, Katy Perry and Justin Timberlake, and then my husband reminded me of the Lady Gaga performance from a couple of years ago, more than a couple years ago. But do y'all remember that performance? At the time, um, it was a brand new technology. She had over 300 drones that were synchronized together to make different patterns, and so they. They could make the Pepsi logo. They could make uh, the uh, U.S. flag. And I was enthralled whenever I saw that as part of her halftime performance, that, that we had a technology that could align things, that could synchronize things. It wasn't 300 people controlling 300 different drones. It was all synchronized together. Well, that's kind of like the season of Lent. When we go into this season of 40 days, or technically 46 days when you add the, um, the Sundays in there, leading up to Easter, what we are hoping to do in the church is to synchronize with God more closely and to align ourselves with God once again. And to look at the places in our lives that are not as aligned. Look at the places where we could be closer to God, to draw closer to God. And so what we do during Lent is some of us will take up a new practice, or some of us will give up something. Some of us may even fast. I heard somebody earlier gave up hot showers one year. I am not doing that, y'all. I'm not doing it. But what we do in those spiritual practices, and y'all are going to have to excuse my voice, it keeps coming in and out. What we do in those spiritual practices is we find ways that we can align with God more fully. And we look at the places in our lives that are a distraction from us aligning from God, or the places that we take for granted that could align us with God more clearly and bring us closer to one another, closer to our neighbors, and ultimately closer to who Jesus calls us to be. I did tell Chris um, on Ash Wednesday that I feel like I've given up enough this year, and um, so I will not be giving up something uh, this year for Lent. Um, and joking aside, I, I am still in the process process of trying to decide what I'm going to um, do this year for Lent, because it's an important time and an important season, um, and I'm uh, continually looking for the holy nudge of the Spirit to sort of show me what, what, what in my life could I do to align more fully with God. Well, it goes in line with our sermon series, Small Choices Change Everything. We're going to be talking about prayer over the next five weeks leading up to Easter. We've got Palm Sunday and then Easter, of course, as well, that are standalones, their own thing. But we're going to be talking about prayer, and prayer is the same way. If we were to define prayer just very basically, I would tell you that prayer is alignment with God's desires and God's purpose. Prayer is the alignment with God's desires and God's purpose. It's that connection that we have to God. And in the same way during Lent that we look for ways to align with God, prayer is one of those ways that we do that. And so over the next several weeks, we're going to be talking about small choices that we can make in our prayer life that can maybe actually make a huge difference in our walk with God. So today we're starting in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1. Um, and you may think, wow, you know, we're... We're almost to the spring where, you know, we're in February, mid-February. You'd think we'd be past chapter one of Mark. We're not. <laughs> the Gospels are all written a little bit differently, and the Gospel of Mark does not um, follow the normal narration story of when, uh, of Jesus' birth. And so there is no birth narrative in Mark. And so today, where we start off with Mark is actually where Mark starts. 
We start at the baptism of Jesus. So we're going to start with verse 9 in chapter 1 of Mark. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, you are my son, the beloved, and with you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tested by Satan, and he was with the wild beast and angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Those were the words we said on Ash Wednesday. And as Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, We've now moved to the Sea of Galilee. He saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And as he went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending their nets. Immediately. He called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. So Mark's gospel is one of four gospels that we have that tell these stories of Jesus' life, his birth, his death, his teachings, and his resurrection. But Mark is a little bit different because Mark moves at this very fast-paced speed. If you notice now, we just read 11 verses, and in those 11 verses, Jesus was baptized. Jesus was driven out into the wilderness for 40 days where he was tested. Jesus then went into Galilee and proclaimed the good news of God. And then Jesus called his first disciples. That all happens in the Gospel of Mark in 11 verses. If you are looking to read scripture or if you have never read the Bible before, I would encourage that you start with Mark because Mark is easy to read and it actually is is written sort of like it's an action cartoon sketch, just one piece after another. But what I love about the gospel of Mark is that it is nuanced. It is quick. And unless you slow down and really read it, you can miss some really important things. Like the fact that the word immediately for Mark is used over 41 times just in the gospel of Mark. To put that in context, the Greek word for immediately is used 59 times in the total of the New Testament and in Mark 41 times. Mark is focused on the here and now. He is focused on immediacy, urgency, the power of this moment. And so he begins every single piece of what he's writing to tell us about Jesus, that a Jesus immediately went and called the first disciples out of the boat. Jesus was driven out into the wilderness. And we even hear the disciples of all the things that they go to do that are wrong later on. What do they do when they're called by Jesus? They immediately drop their nets and follow Jesus. Mark today gives us an understanding of of how we can focus on now, that the kingdom of God is now. That's what Jesus said um, in verse 15. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. It's immediacy. It's urgent. Mark tells us something about pace. And maybe something about our prayer life and something about our faith life that could help us with our pace. That maybe we don't have to wait until the very right moment or the most holy moment. But maybe what God is calling from us is a little bit more urgency and immediacy. Now let me clarify for a minute that that's different than uh, more demanding, right? The word here is immediately, not demanding, And so what Jesus is calling us to through Mark's words is a pacing. It's not just uh, an invocation, but 
It is not just an incantation, it is an invocation. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Incantation means that we have to do things at a certain time. There is a right time for something. And it has to be a certain way. There is a right way to do something, the most holy way to do something. And what Mark's gospel talks about is that our prayer life doesn't have to be an incantation. It can be an invocation. That right now we could choose to pray and it's the right time. That in 10 minutes from now we could choose to pray and it is the right time. Mark's pace tells us that whenever we choose to seek and desire God, God is right there. It doesn't have to be some sort of holy moment. It doesn't have to be the right words. It simply has to be authentic and God meets us right where we are. So in Mark's gospel, we talk about immediacy. And then we hear some other nuanced pieces in here. At Jesus' baptism, there is a one word that is different um, from the other gospels. In verse 9, it says that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John. And as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove. And a voice came from the heavens and said, you are my son, the beloved. You are my son. In the other gospels, it's a public announcement. When Jesus comes up out of the water, there is a voice that is heard. But we aren't told who it's heard by. But we, we do know is that in the other gospels, the voice that is heard says, this is my son. It is a public announcement, meaning that many people hear it. But here in Mark's gospel, it is a personal announcement. Maybe even just to Jesus saying, you are my son. You are the beloved with whom I am well pleased. That may seem something that, that we could just look over, or something that doesn't really matter a whole lot, but that actually has a lot to do with our prayer, prayer life. Our prayer life is personal. Our prayer life doesn't have to be public announcements. It doesn't have to be um, done in a way that is for all the other people. Because God comes to Jesus in this moment of baptism when Jesus is starting his ministry and says, you you are my son. You are the beloved. And in the same way, what prayer does for us is it becomes personal. We recognize that God desires to draw near for us, but God makes that invitation with us and for us. I heard once that prayer is a solitary act that is not meant to be done alone. Now think about that for a minute. Prayer is a solitary act that is not meant to be done alone alone. Now you can do prayer alone in, in your own space, in your own time. It can be solitary, but the intention of prayer is not to be all by itself. It's supposed to be done in community with one another. I want you to think for a moment, if the church has been part of your life for a while, what the act of prayer and corporate prayer has done for you. Have you ever had a time when somebody has come up to you and asked you about something going on and said, I've been praying for you? Have you heard about our prayer ministry that meets here every Tuesday night and all of the prayer requests that we write, they go over each and every one and they pray for them individually? As the community of faith, as the body of Christ, we not only believe in the personal power of prayer, but we believe that praying together for one another makes a difference. It's not something that we put off. It's not something that we give to somebody else. It is ours to do as the people of God. We also learn in this one particular passage that prayer is not a negotiation. Do you notice here when Jesus calls the first disciples that Jesus is the only one in Mark's gospel who talks? It says, Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee. He saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets. Jesus said, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. I'm pretty sure that there was a wife somewhere that needed to go be consulted before this happened. But maybe another sermon for another day. And then we hear about James and his brother John, the sons of Zebedee. They just leave their dad in the boat. We don't hear any conversation 
about what happens with these first disciples. In Mark's gospel, it doesn't matter. The only word that matters is immediately. Immediately, they chose to say yes and follow Jesus. It maybe says something to us about our prayer life that when we begin to get into these negotiations with God, that maybe that is not prayer. That maybe prayer is not about getting all of the answers or about God being a genie or giving us the solutions or even a cure. But maybe prayer is where we meet God. Prayer is where we meet God and with immediacy choose to say yes. Choose to listen once more to the desires that God has for our lives and in return choose to live out those desires in a new and different way. It's with immediacy that they get out of the boat, that they drop their nets, and that they go and follow Jesus. Finally today, prayer reminds us of our purpose. When we are drawn closer to God, we begin to remove things from our lives and we begin to have something that is restored in our lives. Something that is removed and something that is restored. We hear that, that the disciples drop their nets with immediacy. We hear that they go and they follow Jesus. We hear that God says to Jesus, you are mine. Lent is that time where we both remove and restore things in our lives, but we cannot do so without aligning ourselves more fully with God. Without aligning ourselves more fully with who God has called us to be. When we talk about removing things from our lives, that's a very Lenten practice. But it's also something that we do every day. It is part of who we are and it's part of our natural day-to-day -day life. I don't know about y'all, but um, based on the weather and um, just my personal preferences, I, I, want, I want my garden to be beautiful this spring. Not that I don't have other things going on. Um, but I have been in a holding pattern of going out there to get started on it because I know that before I can plant all the beautiful beautiful new plants and enjoy the beautiful colors that will be in my garden, I have to remove a lot of stuff first. I have to get rid of all of the junk. I have to get rid of all of the stuff that is left over from last year. We do this every single day. In order to start something new in our lives, we have to remove things first. Prayer offers us a chance to do that. Prayer offers us the silence, the contemplation, the moments, and the space to remove the things in our lives that God does not desire to be there. But then that second piece of it is so important, too, that prayer also helps us to restore things in our lives, too. In the Psalms, it says, Restore unto me the joy of my salvation and renew a right spirit in me. Those are also words that we read on Ash Wednesday this week. The Lenten season is about restoration. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. When we begin to have something restored in our lives, and when we say yes to God in prayer, not at the right moment, but at the moment where God meets us, where we need God with immediacy, God begins to open up a restorative respect perspective for us. God begins to do something in us that is different. We begin to see a fuller picture. Not only in this season, but in most seasons of my life, it is so easy to get distracted by all of the other things going on. What prayer does, no matter what time of day, no matter for how long, is when we are reminded of our purpose, we get that perspective again. Today, I want you to try something as your first small chance, small choice um, practice for Lent. I want you to practice this week praying at a time that is either inconvenient or whether it is um, in a different place or a different time. I want you, whenever the thought of prayer comes in your head, I want you to take however long you see fit. If you're driving, don't close your eyes, please. 
And I want you to pray. I want you to open up that dialogue with God. And here's what my prayer and my hope is for you and for me. When we do that, when God puts that holy nudge in us, it often reminds us of a perspective and a purpose in the moments that we need it the most. I am a planner. I like schedules. And I don't know that I often let things interrupt my life. But I'm wondering this week and in this season as I hear Mark talk about that word immediately, immediately they dropped their nets and they followed Jesus. If maybe the way that the Spirit works is through those holy nudges, is through those little just moments throughout your day where you could just simply say one sentence, one 30-second prayer. If you need help with that, if you don't know what to say, you could say the Lord's Prayer. If you wanted to do something simple and you wanted to be reminded every day, you could do something simple like, help, thanks, wow. Ask God for something you need help with. Give God thanks for something and talk about something that you see that makes you go, wow. It doesn't have to be complicated. It is not about incantation. It is about invocation. Jesus has already invited us out of the boat. Jesus has already invited us immediately to the kingdom of God that is now. What does it look like for us this week to make one small choice that helps us to not only get out of the boat, but to align ourselves more fully with where God is and who God is calling us to be? So this first week is about willingness. We have to be willing. We have to be willing not only to say yes to what God has called us to, but to say yes to the small choices. Those things like we talked about with our kids earlier, we make choices all the time. Well, choosing to pray, short prayer, long prayer, choosing to do something different in our faith life, it's a choice that requires willingness. I pray for you today a spirit of willingness. I pray for myself today a spirit of willingness. That you might see God in a new and fresh way. That you might be reminded of your purpose. You might be given perspective just by saying yes. Amen. We're going to go into a time of offering now where we say yes to God. Where we choose to have a willing heart once again to give back to God for all that God has done for us. There are so many ways that you can give. One of them is through our Venmo app at Christ United or through our online giving platform that is at cumc.com slash give. Or you can give through the offering baskets that are coming by in just a few minutes. Um, and during this time of offering, we're going to sing, uh, I say my favorite song. I have a lot of favorites. It's, I'm, I'm in the right place. This is a good song. Um, that talks about stepping out of the boat, being willing to say yes. It also talks about the fears and the apprehensions that we have with that. It talks about um, the ways in which we don't always trust where God is leading us. But as you listen to this song, let the words pour over you. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the water wherever you have called me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith would be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. I pray that your willingness opens up, that my willingness opens up, that in the small yeses that we say to God this week, that we experience a trust and a love for God that is new and afresh in our lives. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, with all that we have and all that we are, we give once again, we give of ourselves for your service and your glory. God, give us open eyes this week. Give us willing spirits and open hearts this week. 
so that even in the little place, even in the small choices, God, we might see just how abundantly we have been called by you and how deep and how beautiful that calling is. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.
God, what will you have for me? What would you have me to do? And in that willing spirit, be taken back out into the world where God has called us to love and to serve graciously. I hope you have a wonderful week and we will see you next week. Blessings. Amen. If you are able in body or in spirit, will you stand and sing this last song with us? Here we go. The Lord Oh